everybody, it's Lilac Spectrum here for another book review. Um, I'm in my room and this is my closet and um, I, it's kind of getting dark outside and it's rainy and I just really don't want to review in there. I want to be in here because my dad is watching some Netflix so I'm um, taking the time to review this book in this room, my room for the first time. So yeah. So today I am reviewing this series that I love and it's the first series I ever reviewed for this channel and I'm continuing to review it because um, I finished it just now, like literally just now I finished it and I literally wrote down information I want to say about it and this and that and the other so we'll get right to it. So this book is by Beverly Lewis of course and it's the third installment in the Abrams Daughter series and it's called The Sacrifice. And, um, this is a library book, so I won't even talk about, like, how much it is or anything like that, because I didn't buy it personally, so, um, the page number is 147 pages, so it's pretty good to read. Um, if you sit down and read it, you could probably read it in a few minutes, um, in a few days or whatever, if you just sit down and read just that, so. And, of course, I'm now starting the fourth one which is this one, and I own this one so I don't have to like rush to get it done. So that's another thing about owning the book is you don't have to rush to finish it. So the cover, the cover is uh, just a girl, an Amish girl on it, and uh, she's looking kind of sad, she's like, mm. so um, the cover really with this book series honestly could literally be uh, anything and I would still read this series because I love the series so much. So. I wasn't too picky about the cover. Copyright is 2004, so this particular edition is 2004's edition. So there you go. I don't know. Of course, they'll be different as they change. And I'm also eating a cough drop, so I'm, if I sound like I have something in my mouth, I do. What I have to say about the like review part that I'm gonna try to start doing with all the reviews now. But I do have some stuff I want to talk about that happens in the book. So I know in the last two books I kind of kept them short and sweet and simple and try not to give you guys too much information. But this time I want to talk about stuff because there are things that I noticed throughout the story that I hated and I loved and I just want to talk about them. So if you have not read the book and you do not like spoilers, you might want to click off this video because I'm about to spoil a lot of stuff. If you have not read the book and you do like spoilers, keep, keep watching. Um, but there were a lot of stuff and I literally took the time and I have been with the books I'm reading now. I have literally been taking the time to sit down, write notes about what I like and don't like about these books so I can improve my reviewing capabilities for you guys. So the first point I made is you finally find out what happens to Sadie's baby. Um, I think one thing about this book and this series, I haven't read any other series by Beverly Lewis yet, and I want to, um, is she kind of leaves you kind of hanging with some of this stuff. She doesn't really, like, there's sometimes and she, like, is spot on and she tells you exactly what you want to know, but other times it's like she almost beats around the bush and kind of leaves it open to interpretation. So, like with the baby, um... I don't really like I can't really go into it about the baby but like you find out like that the baby is actually dead like it was a stillborn and for the longest time and maybe it's just me I felt like maybe the baby wasn't dead and that the and maybe the baby wasn't dead and that maybe the um, doctor who helped deliver the baby which is also the great baby's grandfather kept the baby you know, without anybody knowing and just said, we adopted this baby or whatever, I don't know. It just like, for, throughout the whole series so far, there have been lots of points and uh, there are more points that I have instilled in this email that I made notes about that as well. So I'll go back and explain some more things so that I will give you guys um, details and understand where I'm coming from with these different things I'm saying. So you do find out the baby is dead, um, you kind of go through the doctor's eyes and see that he's tending the grave with the child, and it's finally solved, it's resolved, so 
the next um, big thing that happened in the book was Mary Ruth's boyfriend was killed in an automobile accident and um, who is actually the brother of um, Derry, which is the father of Sadie's child. So his brother gets in a wreck with Mary Ruth's um, boyfriend slash fiance and it kills him and um, it was just terrible that that happened and you know he was also obviously riding in a car while the Amish boy was riding in a cart and it, it just didn't go so well when they got the wreck. So then uh, the next point I write is Mary Ruth starts questioning her faith and attends a new church that is non-Amish. So it is a Christian church, but it's not Amish. So, and um, it's very interesting how that kind of starts the ball rolling when she starts wanting to become a teacher. She wanted to become a teacher, but then she got with her beau or fiance and kind of like let that fly out the window. And then he died and she started changing her ways. And then you find out through the grapevine that Sadie is supposedly pregnant again. But we still don't know if, if she and Jonas are married. Like, her and Jonas, Jonas is off. She goes off from in the last book. And you just kind of, like, guesstimate with all this stuff. And it's just like Beverly Lewis leaves you hanging. I don't know if it's so that she can write a new book and add on to it or what. But it's like you just kind of, 90% of the book is just you going, what? And is this real? Um... When are you going to die? And it's almost like Game of Thrones, but for Amish people. Because, honestly, in the Game of Thrones, they kill everybody off, supposedly. And this book is the same way. So, there are a lot of deaths in this one, particularly. Of the first two weren't as bad, but this one, it was like everybody was dying. And I'm like, whoa, Beverly Lewis, you need to calm down. <laughs> Mom of the family, uh is pregnant again. She already had Lydian, which was from the last book, and she has another baby. This time it is a boy, but the baby is breached, and she kind of hints throughout her whole pregnancy that there's a complication, and about the baby's breached, and of course they don't get any, like, real medical help for her, and she sadly dies in childbirth, and asks Leah to watch after the child for her, the children, the two kids, and, um, it's crazy. Leah and Gideon, or Gid, um, are starting to kind of re reconnect. He liked her, and her father wanted him to be with her, but she liked, um, Jonas and wasn't so sure. Jonas left, and then she started going back to Gid, and it starts kind of developing a little relationship. And then her mom dies, and she has to take care of these children now, and she promises her mom she will as her mom is dying. Then Gid and Leah end up breaking their engagement because Leah has to take care of the children. Um, and for some reason this just made me so angry throughout this book. Uh, and it happened really close to the end. It was just like, um, and it was almost like it didn't happen over an expanse of time. It was just like one day we're fine and then the next day Gid comes and then he's like, we need to break it off. And I'm like, when did we decide we were going to break it off? So, it makes me mad. The only, the reasoning behind it was that Gid was like, well, we could take the children and raise them as our own in our own house. And the father was like, no, these are my children that need to be raised with me. And so, the whole thing was like, Gideon didn't want to go back and forth between himself and the father, between Leah and all that. And I just felt like it was just a quick out for her, for him. And it made me kind of mad. I mean, not so mad that I put the book down, but it made me somewhat mad. So saying you know like not even well I don't know how long it was in the escape of things but next thing we know getting him like oh by the way I want to date your sister now what is up with these people and dating each other like Sadie goes off to be with Jonas she supposedly is with Jonas and then Leah gets back with another guy and finally the guy everybody wants her to get with and then she's all of a sudden getting her man stolen again by her other sister so that just makes me mad too because I've been through something similar and I can relate to Leah because it is a 
thing that would happen to me so I can relate to her. And I was feeling really bad for Leah in this whole book. And I've, I've, I've been feeling bad for Leah the whole time, but really this book really kind of hit home for me. Um, then at the end, toward, towards the end, the book skips several years. Like, it's like six or seven years. The book skips, and you, I hate when books do that because you feel like you're leaving something out, and like I'm leaving something out, and I don't know. Have you ever listened to somebody tell a story, and they skip over like an important detail, but you can feel it before they say they did it? That's how I feel. But I didn't have a problem with that. Of course, I mean, I had no problem with it. I still read it to the very end because I wanted to do a review on this series. And then... Um, as they're skipping those years, Mary Ruth is starting to see Robert, the guy who killed her beau in the automobile accident, which he didn't kill him, the automobile accident killed him, but it was almost kind of like, like I saw that coming from like half a book away, so it wasn't so much like that I was mad or anything about that, but it was like, oh, okay, yeah, I figured that was happening, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, and then Sadie ends up writing saying that she's a widow and that she wants to come home. And the thing about Sadie aggravates me. Sadie has, has like written them and said, I will repent and blah, 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 blah. Will you guys let me come home? And her dad's like, well, we can let you come home because the preacher people said it's fine. And so Sadie comes home and, um, supposedly, of course, you know, Leah's imagining it to be like, She's with Jonas, and she's a widow now, so that means her boyfriend or husband is dead. And, um, so, yeah. They don't really, she doesn't really specify in her note, like, who she was with. And then she comes home, and she's like, well, I'm so sorry Jonas is dead, and you took him away one time, and now he's dead. And you can just feel the anguish in Leah. And, um, she's like, oh, no, I wasn't with Jonas, and it's like, really, Beverly Lewis, why did you do that to me? And, um, so yeah, she was with some other guy, and she got pregnant, I think, several times, but they, they were all stillborn, so it, you can kind of relate to Sadie because you feel bad for her, but there's, I, I felt like I relate a lot more to Leah. So that's just a few points I had on this whole book. It was a good read, it kept me guessing to the very end things I did not like was that some things she just kind of left hanging or the good thing where he was just like we shouldn't be together anymore and it was it, she only like devoted like a few paragraphs to it and it was just like you almost if you were reading fast like I do sometimes because I'm trying to get finished with that chapter so I can go do something you almost kind of can skip over it and not even realize it and you have to go back so <laughs> there was a lot of things like I was reading it and like, have you ever read a page, and then you're like, you get this way, and you're like, wait a minute, and then you have to go back and reread it, because you didn't even realize what happened. Yeah, there was a few times where I did that in this book, not so much because, I, I think it was just because I was just reading and really getting into the story, and I was like, oh my god, what happens, what happens, and you know, that's my problem, is I get so excited that I can't control myself from reading too fast. So, when you sit with this book, just make sure you can devote attention to it, it's a really good book series. Like I said, it's like crazy. It's so crazy. It's a good book and I'm surprised it still relates on the level it does today. So, um, of course the next book I own, um, so I will be reading it and hopefully reviewing it for you guys, which I'm sure I will because I really like this book. Unless there's just nothing to this book, I'm probably going to get a review out to you guys. I don't know when this review will go out. Whenever it goes out is when it goes out. Um, I'm nearing finals um, in a couple of weeks, so I don't know how uploads will be. I usually only upload like one video a week because, you know, I just, I'm like that. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching. If there is a book like this series, which is an Amish type series, or any books by anybody, especially Beverly Lewis, that you happen to like, um, leave them below, especially Amish books, because I really want to get into more Amish books. I want to make my channel a channel where it's not the popular books. Like, you've got so many people out there that book to that 
do the popular stuff that's coming out. And of course I'm going to do some more popular things, but I want to also review books that not many people know about. Now people know about Beverly Lewis, she's a pretty popular name, but you know, like a book like about, like I did the Dearly Devoted, Dearly Departed Dating Service a few videos ago, and you'll probably see that one before you see this one. But I want to do books that not many people know about so that people can get interested in something different. Because I feel like in today's society, all we have now are dystopian novels, vampires, werewolves, and maybe a witch here and there. And it's just the same thing over and over again, over and over again, especially for young adults. It's so repetitive, so repetitive, and it's so not annoying so much to me. But it can get annoying because everyone's like, oh, another werewolf story. So I want to do stories that maybe a lot of people have read, but maybe my generation hasn't read this as much. Because I doubt many people in my generation have read this book. So maybe you've read this book and you would like to tell me how you feel about it. What did you think? Were there good points and bad points for you? If, if you have some points, leave them below. I'd love to hear them. Um, I love talking to people about this book because it's so good. I have not met anybody who has read it and enjoyed it yet because um, my channel's not very popular yet, but I would love to read some comments from people who say they really like this series because I really like this series. So if there are any books out there that are similar to the series or similar to Beverly Lewis's writing or anything you want me to read, even if it's popular, I don't mind. But like I said previously, I would like to read some unpopular books so that I can get those out there. So if you have any books out there that you would like me to read, leave them below. Or you can also tweet me, which in my Twitter is at Carmi underscore Thomas, which is my name. Um, my real name. <laughs> uh, it's also Love Me Senpai on Twitter. But you can look me up at, at Carmi underscore Thomas and tweet me some books that you would like me to read. Of course, I always share these videos on Twitter and um my social medias. I also have a Facebook page now that is a like a fan page. You literally can look up Lilac Spectrum and you'll find it. Um, all of my social medias are on my main page. You can click on my name. I think it'll be below or to the side. It depends on what you're watching on. And you can literally, my banner at the top of my YouTube channel has all these little icons that are, um, my different social media, so like DeviantArt, Wattpad, uh, Facebook, I don't think I'll put Facebook on there yet, but uh, Twitter, um, whatever else, fan fiction, all those sites, Instagram and all that, you can find me via that, because um, it's so hard and it's so annoying to have to copy every single one of those, every time I do a video, even when I don't do many videos, but it's annoying to do that in the description and it makes it long and hard to decipher so maybe I will in the future but right now I'm not but if you want to find me on any of those like forums or anything like that you can click one of those and go there and then maybe I'll leave the link to my Facebook page but honestly like I said you just have to look up Carmi I mean um, Lila Spectrum here and my Twitter name is at underscore Carmi underscore Thomas so thank you guys so much for watching um, if you like this video give me a thumbs up because it would be very appreciated Thank you guys. Bye. Hey guys, if you would like to, please subscribe to me and below you can find different links to all my social medias and where you can reach me. Bye.